Well, good morning, Jason. It's not hard to point out here that what you can see behind me proves that this tornado didn't just rip homes apart, but it truly ripped lives apart. Now we are entering day three of really that recovery effort, the, the process to rebuild. But if you look around, it truly feels like this storm ripped through last night. Now that's not because of the lack of effort of the men and women who have spent tireless and countless hours out here truly working to make a headway here. But it really is because there's just that much significant damage and the focus today remains on recovering the missing those who might still be underneath several layers of rubble and debris that you can see scattered here. This is the Creekwood neighborhood, one of the areas that uh, local officials here truly have coined ground zero for this tornado that has ripped through Bowling Green. And I, I want to bring you to two gentlemen who understand the devastation here firsthand. Mayor Todd Alcott and Sergeant Robert Perry, thank you both for, for joining us this morning. I, I first of all want to thank you both for your efforts that the long days and nights I know you've both put into being here doing everything you can to, to heal this community that I know is going to take months and months on end. Mayor, I, I want to start with you because I know we are seeing sort of a glimpse of, of the devastation that, that exists here in Bowling Green. I know you've been out here every day since and have likely seen more. Can you just paint that picture for us? What has that been like for you to see your community, your neighbors going through this? Nicole, uh, you know, resiliency is probably the word that comes out the most. Um, the outreach, the outpouring, um, you know, from this, the minute it happened, uh, December 11th, Bowling Green will never change. Um, it, it's going to remain in our minds, but, you know, that's just a moment. What really is about and what we've seen is incredible. Um, you know, we're going to come out of this. It's, it has been devastating. Um, we have families. We have loss of life. Um, our goal is to take care of people as best as possible, and it's been difficult. Um, you know, we're standing here at the worst hit. Uh, Bowling Green was hit in four major areas. Um, we still have communication lines down. Really, the only thing we have working at the moment is our cellular data. Um, you will see some parts of the city that are perfectly functioning well. So I, I don't want people to think that the city is not working. Um, we know we have over 72,000 people in our city, and we have thousands that were hurt hard but we have so many more that are working around the clock to get the aid and the relief. Um, if, if there's one thing that I could ask, you know, our Fox News and friends is that, you know, if they really want to help, uh, we're being inundated with so many calls, with so many things to support. And, and we have police officers from Lexington, from Louisville, from Franklin, from uh, Orangeboro. Uh, we have utility companies from as far um, is uh, North Georgia and Tennessee and Glasgow. They are here helping us. Uh, we need those type of support. We have the National Guard going to join us this morning. Uh, we have 36 uh, boots on ground. Uh, we need them. But it's been about the gridlock that we've been in. Uh, people, you know, want to come out, but we have to be able to control that. We're setting up right now at this moment a uh, today a place where our volunteers can go and then we can get them to where they need and so it, it's been about taking care of those in first need kind of you know climbing out of our foxhole and be able to take care but if people really want to help there is a united way local uh, donation set up at uwsk.org that's uwsk.org that's united way southern kentucky people can give directly to the citizens of Bowling Green that have lost and we will ensure that money gets to them to get a roof over their head, to get clothes, to get um, ability to, to buy food because we, if you see, people have lost everything and we have ethnicities, we have language barriers, we have uh, cultural barriers. We are working with them. We are talking today and we talked yesterday. We, here we brought in people to surround us because they haven't had any forms of communication whatsoever. So we had to be able to corral them. And then there's a local school right behind us that we just got power up yesterday. They are spending the night in that school. Uh, they're getting the food. We're registering them with Red Cross, but 
uh, that United Way will be able to be able to give them their needs.